Hello everyone. Welcome back to Art, Truth and Politics uh, Part 7. In the last class, we have seen Harold Pinder continuing his anti-American uh, criticisms and he strongly says that America and Britain should be brought before International Criminal Court of Justice. From there we move forward, para 32. Death in this context is irrelevant. Both Bush and Blair place death well away on the back burner. Back burner means last resort. Both Bush and Blair are viewing death as a last resort. They are not, al not at all concerned about the death of people, especially when they are in a foreign country like Iraq. At least one lakh uh, Iraqis were killed by American bombs and missiles before Iraq insurgency began. Insurgency means active resistance. Even before the Iraqis started an active resistance against America, at least one lakh Iraqis were killed. However, uh, these people are of no moment. No moment means no significance. Their death was not at all considered as a serious uh, offense by these people. Uh, their deaths don't exist at all. It is off record. They are blank. They are not even recorded as being dead. And about this, an American general, Thomas Tommy Franks referred like this, we don't do body counts. So we are not counting the bodies. That is what an American general opined about, said about this. So that was the attitude of America towards the <coughs> death of the Iraqis. So the paraphrase is like this, innumerable people were killed during American intervention on Iraq. Death is not considered as of any importance by Blair and Bush. Though many people were killed, it was off records, it was not in records. We have, sorry, we don't have the habit of counting bodies, an American general Tommy Franks said. We are moving on to para 33. You can see an image of a small boy kissing Tony Blair when Tony Blair visited Iraq. Early in the invasion, early during the invasion, there was a photograph published on the front page of British newspapers of Tony Blair kissing the cheek of a little Iraqi boy. <laughs> a grateful child, said the caption. A few days later, there was a story and photograph on an inside page of another four-year-old boy with no arms at all, no hands at all. His family had been blown up by a missile. He was the only survivor. When do I get my arms back? He asked. The story was dropped. Dropped means story was ignored. Well, Tony Blair was not holding him in his arms, nor the body of any other mutilated child, nor the body of any blood, bloody corpse. Blood is dirty. It dirties your shirt and tie when you are making a sincere speech on television. So this is uh, an event that happened uh, during the war. Um, Tony Blair kissing a child was given uh, much sensation. It was published on the front page because uh, it will be uh, bringing a positive impact on their character. However, the sufferers, the suffering people are not at all given importance. Their stories are published on inside pages, not in the front page. So, so that is what Pinder was saying. So if you are, if these leaders of the countries were uh, taking the mutilated people 
uh, attacked people uh, in their hands their shirts will be dirtied that is how um, pinder criticizes them so the paraphrase is like this pinder points out an incident happened during the war during the early days british newspapers published a picture of tony blair kissing the cheek of a little iraqi boy later story of another boy was published on an inside page story of a boy who lost his arms that news was ignored it didn't get attention nobody wants a boy without arms holding them will dirty their press moving forward para 34 oh, the 2000 american dead are an embarrassment they are, they are transported to their graves in the dark funerals are unobtrusive oh, out of harm's way the mutilated rot in their beds some for the rest of their lives so the dead and the mutilated both rot in different kinds of graves see during this war not only the iraqis were dead americans were also dead 2000 americans were dead their bodies were um, transported to their graves their bodies were buried secretly in the dark uh, and uh, unobtrusive funerals are unobtrusive because it did not catch any attention it was done secretly and the mutilated rot in the the people the living people who were mutilated who were wounded in the wars they decayed in their beds for the rest of their lives and so pinder was saying that both dead people and both living people both were considered as same some uh, the dead people were buried uh, in their graves but the living people were equivalent to being dead so paraphrase is like this not only iraqis uh, 2000 american soldiers were also dead they were secretly buried their funerals did not capture attention Uh, the seriously wounded people they spend the rest of their lives suffering in bed the dead people were buried though living the wounded people were treated as if they were dead para 35 see this thing uh, they are nuclear warheads nuclear uh, warheads used in war nuclear bombs used in wars united states now occupies 702 military installations military camps throughout the world in 132 countries with the honorable exception of sweden of course so american united states had 702 military camps throughout the 132 countries all over the world except to sweden so uh we don't quite know how they got there but they they are there all right uh, the united states possess possesses 8000 active and operational nuclear warheads nuclear bombs 2000 are on hair trigger alert hair trigger alert means they can be launched within a short time ready to be launched with 15 minutes warning it is developing new systems of nuclear force america is making developing new systems of nuclear force known as bunker busters um, british the british ever cooperative are intending to replace their own missile trident so trident is the name of the british missile they are now trying to replace it who i wonder they are aiming at osama bin laden you me jodox jodox uh, is a synonym for common man it is a, a literary character which is used the whose name is used instead of common man china paris who knows what we do now is that this infantile insanity child like madness the possession and the threatened use of nuclear uh, weapons is at the heart of present american political philosophy so threatening with the nuclear weapons has become a practice of american political philosophy we must remind ourselves that 
the United States is on a permanent military footing and shows, shows no sign of relaxing it. That is, Americans, America is maintaining this political attitude without any relaxation. So, uh, this paragraph is almost clear. There is no need of explaining further. America is having uh, military camps in 132 countries except Sweden. They are having a lot of warheads, nuclear bombs uh, ready to be launched at any time. Britain is also replacing their uh, nuclear missile uh, and we, we are not aware to, uh, to whom they are aiming at. So this has become part of the American foreign policy and they are not uh, changing it at all. Para 36, many thousands, if not millions of people in the United States itself are demonstrably sickened, shamed and angered by their government's actions. But as things stand, they are not a coherent, complete political force yet. But the anxiety, uncertainty and fear which we can see growing daily in the United States is likely to, unlikely to diminish. That is, even Americans are against the actions of their government. However, they were not able to do anything. But the anxiety rising within American America can be identified and it will continue. So the Americans themselves are against the uh, American government's activities. I know that President Bush has many extremely competent speech writers, but I would like to uh, volunteer, do the job for uh, myself. I propose the following short address, which he can make on television to the nation. I see him grave, hair carefully combed, um, serious, winning, sincere, often beguiling. Beguiling means appearing charming in order to cheat sometimes employing a wry mocking smile curiously attractive uh, a man's man uh, pinder says that he would like to uh, write a speech for president bush to speak the speech uh, he write uh, writes will be like this See, this is a uh, Pinter is trying to ridicule America like this. God is good. God is great. God is good. My God is good. Bin Laden's God is bad. Uh, his is a bad God. Saddam's God was bad, except he didn't have one. He was a barbarian, uncivilized person. We are not barbarians. We don't chop, we don't cut people's head off. We believe in freedom, so does God. I am not a barbarian. I am the democratically elected leader of a freedom-loving democracy. We are a compassionate that is showing sympathy for others. We are a compassionate society. We give compassion, compassionate electrocution, that is death penalty using electric chair, and compassionate lethal injection, another method of killing. We are a great nation. I am not a dictator. Uh, that is, I am not an autocrat. Uh, he is. That is, Saddam is. I am not a barbarian. He is. And he is. They all are barbarians. I possess moral authority. You see this fist? This is my moral authority. And don't you forget it. See, the meaning is that uh, Pinter is ridiculing America by the speech. Just imagine Bush speaking this. He says that he is very good and Saddam is very bad. Everything America, uh, everything about America is good. Everything Iraq is bad. So I'm stopping here and we'll be back with the, with the next two paragraphs.